Jesus, thank you again uh, just for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to dive into it uh, and, and look at something that you have given us insight and uh, understanding as it pertains to something every single one of us in this room deal with. Lord, th this is a battleground. And I pray that this morning would begin to open our eyes to begin to see and understand what's a strategy we can have to resisting and overcoming uh, temptations in our life. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, a number of years ago, uh, I, I saw a study. I don't, I don't know if maybe some of you have seen this study. I saw a study that was done with children to see how, and they were gonna track them from childhood to teenage life to, to young adulthood on how well they could resist temptation or, or understand delayed gratification. And so what they would do is they would, they would put the child in a room and they would give them their favorite snacks. So like, let's say it was a bunch of cookies. And, and so they would put them in a room with cookies and they would tell them, hey, if, if you will not eat these cookies, uh, after 10 minutes, I will come in and I will give you more cookies. But if you eat any of the cookies, there's no reward for you at the end. And so they're like, God, okay, good. And then they would leave the room and they would watch it. And so there was lots of, there was lots of film on, on these kids. And so you would watch it and the kids would just sit there and they would look at it and they would poke it and then they would kind of move it around and they would stare at it and some would lick it, right? <laughs> like just, and, then, and then some just were like, they just ate it. Like they weren't gonna wait. There was no temptation. They were just eating it, right? And so what was interesting though is that seeing the correlation from when they were a child to when they were adult and seeing when they struggled as a child, they still were struggling as adults, and to me, again, it was just, it was fascinating. So I sat there and I watched this thing and I read about this and I told my wife, I'm like, honey, we've got to do, we have an opportunity to see which one of our kids is going to jail because we will know. <laughs> She's like, Bob, this is a terrible idea. I said, I, I think it's going to be great. So, so I grabbed the youngest two at the time. This is like 14 years ago. I grabbed the youngest two, Chase and Seth. And one was like eight, and the other one was 10. And so I, I said, all right, all right, boys, here's gonna be the deal. We're gonna do this separately. So I got Chase in a room, and I gave him Flaming Hot Cheetos, totally like his kryptonite, like I knew that. So I put him in a room. I said, okay, son, here's the deal. If I'm gonna give you this, and for Seth, I, I could have done anything for Seth, but I just chose ice cream. And so I said, hey, if you can resist this in, over, over uh, the next 10 minutes, dad promises I will give you more of whatever it is that I gave them, and, and, and I wouldn't recommend this, it's probably gonna lead to lots of therapy, but either way, uh, it was fascinating to watch what happened within that. And here, here you know, and, and again, w w when we see that, and we see it with children, like in it's Cheetos, and it's cookies, and it's ice cream, it's, it really is, it's cute, and it's funny. But as you get older, and you struggle to resist temptation, and the temptation is no longer a cookie, but now it's a woman or a man that's not your spouse. It's no longer funny anymore. You know, when it's no longer a, a Cheeto, but now it's embezzling money or it's, or it's hiding from the government or, or, or whatever it is, it's, it's no longer funny. You know, when it's no longer ice cream, but it's a drug or it's alcohol, it's no, it's no longer cute because the ramifications of what happens when we give in to these kind of temptations is it leads to wrecked marriages. It leads to ruined families. It leads to jail time. And for some, it leads to death. And what I've learned about temptation is that, you need to write this down, there is always more at stake than what we think. Always. There is always more at stake than what we think, the other thing that I've learned, especially specifically even in that situation with my boys, this is not always true, just so you know, but a lot of times I think their ability to resist temptation often hinges on them believing whether or not what I said was true. In other words, when I said, hey sons, hey boys, just so you know, uh, if you do this, then I'm gonna do this. If they were like, oh, you know, dad never keeps his word. He never follows through. He's just, he's just teasing with us. He's gonna, you know, I don't think he's just gonna be like, oh, I was just kidding with you. I'm not giving you extra snacks. You know, if, I, if, if they think that about me, then why, why be motivated to show any kind of self-control? So I need to remember there is always more at stake than what you think. The problem is I don't think about that when I'm tempted. 
We don't think about that there's more at stake. What I think about in that moment is that woman or that man makes me feel better about myself or they make me feel loved. That's what I think about in those moments. What I think about in these moments is not about you know, lying to my spouse. I just think about, I don't wanna argue anymore. What I think about is right there, right in the moment, I just want the pain to stop. I don't think about how that drug is going to cause an addiction that's gonna lead to a ruined family. Because in those moments, I don't think there's more at stake. I just think about what's right in front of me. And the second thing that I kind of mentioned earlier is that, just like, just like with my kids, is that whether or not, like whether or not my kids trusted me as their father is gonna be the same thing is gonna be true. When you're tempted and you're struggling, do you really trust your heavenly father and his promises? Do you think in those moments that you can trust him? Because it's in those moments that we begin to ask the question, will God keep his promises? Does God care about my needs and my desires like I do? Does he see me amidst all the other things that are going on around this planet? And at the root of every single temptation in this room, at the root of all of them, here's the question. Can God be trusted? Can God be trusted. And so my goal throughout this series and over the next number, so we're gonna, is today and then the next three weeks, so I hope you won't miss because we're gonna give you tools to help you walk through this stuff every single week. But here's my hope. My hope is to equip you from the scriptures to how we're going to resist and overcome temptation, one, so that you can honor God and you can live a life that doesn't have regrets. You have your Bibles, go ahead and open up with me to Matthew chapter three. And if you're a guest, uh, my name's Bob, and I'm incredibly grateful that you're here. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, we are privileged to have you here. Uh, I hope that you'll keep coming back. It's gonna be a great series for all of us. Uh, it's, been, it's been great for me as I've studied it and begin to write. Uh, if you're tuning in online, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we're gonna spend the next few weeks going verse by verse uh, through the temptations of Jesus. And uh, what we're gonna find is that buried in this story <clears throat> that, that we see through these verses is some incredible insight that I think is unbelievably value. And what it's gonna do, it, it has the potential to, to really set us free. It's gonna have the potential to set you free from all kinds of areas that possibly you struggle with. Listen, and if you're not a Christian, I just want you to know, I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you'll keep coming back. I hope that you'll ask lots of questions. You are welcomed here. And uh, you might even say, oh, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in that whole devil thing. And, you know, and, and here, here's what's pretty cool. You don't have to be a Christian and you don't have to believe in the devil to be tempted. Every single one of us in here have and are and will be tempted. And so no matter what you believe, these principles, these things that we're gonna look at are gonna be able to help you as you think about navigating through this. We just believe that what Christ gives us in the Holy Spirit just helps us overcome those kind of things. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later, but I hope that you'll keep coming. I hope that you'll ask tons of questions as we walk through this. So Matthew chapter three, let's start in verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God <clears throat> descending like a dove and lighting on him, or resting on him, that's what it means, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Now go to chapter four, look at verse one. The very first word is what? Let's put it up there. What's the word? You're gonna have to actually say it out loud. Then, then. Now, the question is, what does that word really mean? Think about this. Then comes right after Jesus was baptized. He comes out of the water right after he says, hey, this is my son whom I love and I'm just proud of him. Then, look what it says. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted 
by the devil. Come on, hold on a second, God. Are you kidding me? Like, what did I do wrong? Come on, isn't that the thought? If you're Jesus in that moment, like, God, why, why, why would you do this? What do you mean am I? God's probably saying, what do, you, what do you mean? I just said, you're my son whom I love and I'm proud of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but why in the world would you, why would you do this? Why would you have the spirits walk me out into the wilderness where I'm gonna be tempted by the greatest tempter of all? I mean, I thought I was being obedient. I thought I was doing your will. I thought I was, I was doing everything that you had asked me to. Doesn't a loving heavenly father bless his children? Like, why would you send me out into the desert to be tempted? And this is where we can struggle. Because in our minds, we think, hey, if I'm doing what God has asked me to do, then I shouldn't struggle so much. I shouldn't be tempted so much. I shouldn't have these kind of thoughts. I shouldn't, like, we, we put all of that at the end, and then we start to struggle and wrestle with whether or not God is good, because why would a good God do all this? What's interesting is, this is not the only situation in Scripture. All you gotta do is, is read your Bible, and you begin to see he did this with Abraham. He did this with Job. He did this with Moses. He did this with Peter. He did this with the disciples. Like there, there is a pattern here that God has done this. So again, as you're, as, as you're thinking about walking through temptation and, you know, and, and, and you're struggling, you're like, well, man, you know, maybe if, if I was a better Christian, if I was just a, you know, if, 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 if I just love Jesus, then I, I wouldn't struggle like this or I wouldn't, I wouldn't give, you know, uh, you know I, I wouldn't think about those. I wouldn't give a second thought to, to those kind of things. And the reality is why why do I struggle with these things? Why would I do this stuff? Jesus was tempted by the devil. Meaning the devil was trying to tempt Jesus into doing stuff. The temptations in and of themselves is not the problem. Thank goodness Jesus didn't give in. The problem is we often do. I really think this is why Jesus offered this in his recommendation of the Lord's Prayer. Remember in the Lord's Prayer? And he says, and lead us not into temptation. I think he's like, guys, I've been there. You don't, you wanna add this to your prayer. I'm just telling you. Make sure somewhere you add it in there because if you're hungry, it's gonna get tough. You know, just, I think it's just, he makes that clear. Verse two, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter then came to him. Now we're gonna pick up there next week. But I want, to, I want to spend some time here because what we're going to see over the next few weeks and in these verses that we're going to look at is, is Jesus really, we, we get an inside look into temptation. And what we're going to discover is that no matter what you're tempted by, hear this, with all these people in the room, there could be, and every single person could have a different temptation. There might be Ones that, you know, said, okay, who struggles with this? Everybody raise there. Who struggles with this? Everybody like, like, you could struggle with similar temptations. But no matter what, every single temptation that is even covered in this room, no matter what it is, it, they can all be linked back to these three temptations that we're going to look at with Jesus. Every single one of them can be linked back to these three temptations. And the Bible is going to give us some insight on how to resist and overcome these temptations so that they don't lead to destructive habits. How many, how many of you, uh, raise your hand if you do, how many of you remember The Wizard of Oz? You guys watch that movie? I love that movie. There's a new one coming out called Wicked. That looks pretty cool. Uh, but I remember watching The Wizard of Oz. I loved that movie as a kid, always did. Uh, but um, I, re I remember near the end of the movie, Dorothy and her friends are standing in front of the great and powerful Oz. Remember this? And they're shaking. They're scared. Like the lion ends up running out. He's so scared and jumps through the window. Remember that whole thing? And so, so, so Dorothy and, and her friends are just shaking. They're quaking. They're fearful of the great and powerful Oz. And, and, and again, all of a sudden, little Toto, remember the little dog? Goes over there, walks around, and all of a sudden he pulls back the what? Curtain. Yeah, see, you've seen the movie. Pulls back the curtain, and what do they find? Just a little man. And what's he say? You remember what he says? 
Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain, right? The great and powerful Oz. Well, all of a sudden, what they were so afraid of, what they were so fearful, the image and the understanding of what this, this, this thing was in front of them, and all of a sudden, the curtain gets pulled back, and they realize, it's not what I thought it was. And they were no longer fearful. And here's what we're gonna learn. And this, to me, this is super powerful because when you and I discover the truth about temptation, when we pull back the curtain on what's true with what you're being tempted on and those personal temptations, it's going to give you leverage. And the truth, what scripture says, is then gonna be able to set you free. This is why this is, I love this part of the gospel, and I love this part as we're gonna talk about this. One of the beautiful things about Jesus coming was not only that he came to die and his resurrection after he died on the cross for our sins, he, get, he paid for the penalty of our sins. Isn't that awesome? I love that. But you know what's also awesome? Not only did he pay for the penalty of our sin, he came to, he came to unlock the power of over sin. So he paid for the penalty of sin and then he unlocked the power of sin so that we are not gripped and shackled by sin any longer. And so the natural question is, so then why do we keep giving into it? Why do we find ourselves at times slaves to sin? Why is it that I can't see, you know, I've got all the excuses and all the reasons why it's got such a grip on me. But again, Jesus, through his grace and through, his, through the power of what he did for us, gives us the ability to be able to say no to temptation and sin and to live our lives, not shackled by the habits of those things, but to keep over and over and over, you know, asking God, please help me, please walk with me. I want to be able to overcome this. And he's gonna give us the strategy as we look over the next few weeks. So let me give you what the three temptations really boil down to. Remember, I said every single temptation is linked to these three temptations. I want you to write this in your notes. The very first temptation is to meet a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. To meet a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. Second temptation, use God to accomplish my own agenda. We're tempted to use God to accomplish my own agenda. And then third thing, to do the right thing at the wrong time, the wrong way, to take a shortcut. To do the right thing at the wrong time, the wrong way, and take a shortcut. And just so you know, we're, we're gonna look at these over the next three weeks, okay? So the following three weeks, we're gonna look at each one of these temptations, and we're gonna flesh those things out. But whether or not you realize it, but when you come to realize that every one of your temptations is linked to one of those three things, and you're like, but how in the world? We're gonna, we're gonna talk about all that. So as you come back, we're gonna, we're gonna work through all of those things uh, so that you can understand where does this come from? Because think about this. Really, our temptations, if, we're, if we really sit back and kind of look at it, they really don't make any sense. Think about it this way. If I were to take a poll, how many people like people that lie? Probably very few of us would say, yeah, I do, right? Like we, would, we, we don't like liars. We don't wanna be married to a liar. We don't wanna work with liars. Uh, we don't wanna be associated with liars. Like if you were to ask, like lying is something that you just can't stand. Maybe it's even been done to you. You've experienced it. You, you just hate it. But all of a sudden, even though you're adamantly against lying because of a set of circumstances or situations or a scenario, all of a sudden you lie. Why? You hate lying. You can't stand people that lie. But because of something, I don't know, you fill in the blank of what it was, but because of that, all of a sudden lying was an attractive option even though you can't stand lying. And my question is, why? 
On the surface, it makes no sense. But it's gonna make perfect sense when you line it up to one of these three temptations. You know, we ask our kids, you know, uh, why do they, you know, son, I need to ask you, or daughter, I need to ask you, you know, like whatever it is, you know, like, hey, why did you do this? And let's say they, they were really mean and they said something hurtful or, or whatever, and you pull them aside and just say, hey, do you think this is the appropriate way to, to talk to your sister? No. Do you, like, do you want to grow up and be a bully? Do you want to be mean? Is that, is that what you're going for? No. What do you feel like that honors God whatsoever? No. So then why do you do it? What do you think they say? You have the same kids. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. And guess what? I don't know. Still happens with us as adults. <laughs> you know, when it comes to uh, marriage, I, I, you know, I was thinking about this. I've done a ton of marriage counseling, lots and lots and lots over all these years. <laughs> And sit down with couples, whether it's premarital, or whether it's people already married. And never once, not once, in over 30 years, never once when I've asked, hey, what's, what is an attribute or a characteristic that you're looking for in your spouse? And you might be the first one, but never once all these years has anybody ever said, unfaithfulness. That's what I'm looking for. Somebody that'll cheat on me and ruin our marriage and wreck our family. Like, that's what I'm going for. Never once would that attribute ever be asked for. And again, everybody's against being unfaithful. You didn't want your parents to be unfaithful. You, you, you didn't want your spouse to be unfaithful. But And all of us are against adultery. And some of you have either done that in your past or it's just around the corner, or it's something you're even considering. it. And my question is, why? why? What? We know it's wrong. I don't want that to be true in my story. I never would have married somebody like that. And yet, I've now become that person. Like, what happened? What? Why did it ever turn out this way? Where does that even come from? You think about addiction. You hate it. If you're addicted, you, you, you know this to be true. Maybe you're getting some healing and, and you're going through recovery, which is awesome, and, uh, but, you, but you know you hate that addiction. You hate what it's done to you. You hate what it's done to your spouse. You hate what it's done to your family. You hate what it's done to your reputation. You hate what it's done to you financially. But here's the reality. Later today or tonight, you are tempted to go right back to it. As much as you hate it and you know the wreckage, and my question is, where does that come from? Here's what it is. And those moments of being tempted, I really believe there are some things that we have forgotten. And this is what I love about Jesus in the scriptures. But buried in the story that we're gonna come back to over these next number of weeks, we're gonna get some keys to unlocking what has had so much power over us. And as we look at the story of Jesus, we're gonna get some strategy, some understanding of how do we navigate this stuff. But hear me on this. But if we don't apply and you just disregard and ignore and choose to nod your head but don't ever put it into practice, I'm just telling you, the potential is for destruction personally, professionally, and with your family. Like it has the potential to create ripple effects that will impact generations. Now, I wanna go back to something I talked about earlier when I said there is always more at stake than what you think. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about it through the lens of Jesus. When the tempter, when the, when the spirit of God takes Jesus out into the wilderness and the tempter comes, and we're gonna look at what, he's, what he does and what he says and all that kind of stuff over the next few weeks. But what was at stake for Jesus? Remember, what we often think is just what's in front of us. See, the, the, it, it wasn't, what was on the line wasn't turning bread from a stone, making bread from a stone. It wasn't jumping off 
the temple and, and potentially an angel catching. That wasn't a stake. What was at stake for Jesus? Him no longer being the perfect sacrifice. You know what was also on the line? Your eternity. Like there is always more at stake than what we think. So one of the things that's at stake every single time is your future. There's three things. The first one is your future. Every time you're tempted, there is a piece or a chunk of your future that's at stake every single time. And it's easier <laughs> to see it in others than it is to see it in ourselves. Wouldn't you agree with that? Hey, you know, this is, hey kids, this is, why, this is why your parents overreact at times. Uh, you know, your, your child will do something, let's just say somewhat small, right? And that, it's all relative. But let's just say, you know, your child does something small and you, you lose your mind. Like you blow a gasket and you just start going, see, no, 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 right there. I can't believe you did that. Do you realize what this is gonna do? I mean, that, your college might be out the window. Your future's out the window. You're gonna be living on the street. I can't believe you did. And your kid's just going, all, I, well, all we did was kiss, but that's where it starts, <laughs> right? Or all I did was have a sip. I didn't inhale. Like, I mean, we just got all these different things. And here's why. Here's why we lose it. Because you know the potential of where it's headed. Because either you experienced it or someone you know sure did. And you're thinking, don't go down that road. Because I know the future of where this leads. And if you just minimize it now and think it's no big deal, I'm telling you, don't do it. See, we see, it's so easy to see it in others, isn't it? You know another place I think it's easy to see is in the movies. How, how, many, how many in here, you, how many in here, uh, you talk to the screen while, while, while the movie's going? Yeah, 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 come on, you know, you know how you're doing it. Like you're sitting there going, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Don't do that, don't even go in there, don't go. Do you realize what you're, you're gonna get killed? You know what, you're dumb. You should already be dead anyway. You died of stupidity. Good for you. I don't even want to watch this movie anymore, right? It's so easy to see it in somebody else. You're like, what are you doing? And I just, wonder, I just wonder if you could watch your own life from that perspective. And all of a sudden, you'd be like, why are you getting with her? Why are you flirting? Don't do that. Do you know where this is headed? It's not one pill. It's going to be a lot more. What are you doing? See, it's always easier. I'm telling you. It's always easier to see it in others. And what we learn about temptation is there's far more at stake than what we think. The second thing that's at stake is your family. Your family is also at stake. I know this to be true that there is probably quite a few of us that could stand on this stage and give testimony to how your childhood was ripped away because of temptation not yours, but your mom or dad. And you would never wish that on your own kids because a mother or a father couldn't stay loyal and true to each other for their sexual desires. They couldn't learn how to tell the truth. They constantly were lying or had a problem with spending, or couldn't understand how to take care of my, like, what, what, like whatever the story is. And you, and you look back at that with possible great hurt, possible resentment, don't want that for your own kids, and you realize it wasn't because of something that you couldn't resist. But their, 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 their inability to understand how to overcome temptation didn't just affect them, did it? It also affected you and your family and potentially your family's family. There is always more at stake than what we think. Your future's at stake, your family's at stake, and then the third and last one is your faith. Your faith is at stake. 
Because every time you give in to temptation, you're just chipping away at your relationship with your heavenly father. Because here's what we basically say when we give in to temptation. God, no. I want to do what I want to do. Not your will, mine. Not your way, mine. My pleasure over your will. And when we give in to temptation, it's constantly chipping away at our confidence and at our relationship and trust with God. In fact, for some of you that aren't Christians, you didn't choose to not follow Jesus because you found some other great philosophy and, and you just thought that was better than Christianity and all that kind of stuff. That's not why. For some of you, here's why it is. You wanted to do what you wanted to do. You knew God wasn't okay with that. I'm not... Steal my faith. I want you to write it down. Temptation. You will not steal my future. You will not steal my family. And you will not steal my faith. So I want you to think of the, the, the temptation that you struggle with the most, the temptation that you battle with the most, the temptation that you feel is like on a regular occurrence. And I want you to turn to the person next to you. I want you to go ahead and tell them what it is. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That's, you're like, what? I don't know. What do you tell them? Don't do that. You can if you want, but I would, you know, it might be weird. So what I'm gonna, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about whatever that is, whatever that temptation is, okay? I want you to think about this. Now let's say it together. Temptation you will not steal my, you will not steal my, and you will not steal my, yeah. I'm telling you, you speak, you bring it back so when you're struggling, if it's that person at work, if it's that thing at work, if it's, if it's that whatever with money, if it's you're, you're stressed out and you're, and you're tempted to, like, like whatever the fill in the blank, if it's a website, and hear me, that doesn't just mean porn. Like Amazon falls into this context as well, right? Amazon Prime specifically. Target, yeah, I mean, we can keep going. Hey, just so you know, there'll be counselors up front if any of you afterwards. But here's the thing, seriously, I want you to think about this. As you're thinking about these things that are, that are, are, are just battles, and if they're causing hardships in your marriage or your relationships, or they're just illegal, like when you, again, all we think is just in the moment when we, when we begin to keep this forefront of our minds, like, no, 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 if I give in to this, this is going to steal my future, what God's future is for me. This is gonna have an impact on my family, the people that I love and care about the most. This is gonna have an impact on my faith and my confidence in God. 
Why would I give in to this? See, when we don't have that at the center of our thinking, we just, because I want to feel loved. Even though it's fake, it's counterfeit. In the moment, I just want to feel good. I just want the pain to stop. I just want to, temptation, you will not steal my future. You will not steal my family, and you will not steal my faith. And here's what I hope that it'll bring back that there's more at stake than just what's in front of us. And Lord, would you use this to help us overcome temptation and not live with regret? And next week, we're gonna look at another strategy that Jesus gives us as we talk about navigating through temptation. Now, hear me on this. I'm gonna pray. We're gonna take communion together, so I hope that you'll sit still and just participate with us because remember, the the very same Jesus that we're talking about that gives us the strategy of overcoming the temptations is also the one that his blood and body were shed for the penalty of sins and the power over sin. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much. You're so incredibly good, and I'm grateful, Lord, that you give us the word of God to be able to know how to work through and process and struggle through. And because we're like, Jesus, you were fully God and yet fully man. We're just fully human. And in our humanness, these are battles. But yet you give us the spirit of God to reside and live in us. And so you give us the power to say no to these things that will rip us apart. God, would you help us cling to you and your word? Not not five ways to do this and three ways to do that. No, Lord, 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 would we be so grounded to your word and to your spirit that as we follow your lead and are reminded that you have given us this beautiful gift of your spirit to help us walk through the challenges and the difficulties of life. Lord, help us as we choose to want to honor you and live with no regrets. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen.